So we bought a trap, a crawfish trap, crawdad trap, mud ducks, however you want to say it. And we put it into the uh, pond with some bait. And now we're going to go see if we have anything in it. Oh, we got a lot of little bait fish. We gotta clean this pond up. I think that's what a new video we should do. If anybody know, comment down below. We have a lot of brush out here. It's gonna help the fish, but too much of all of this is going to take some of the oxygen for the fish to have. We'll do a simple little DIY pond cleanup here. Uh, first, what we'll do is we'll get the lawnmower just edge around here. We'll get the weed eater. And then I got a nice little tool that will get rid of a lot of this uh, lily pads and um, vegetation out of here and then some of this moss this algae right here will uh, get rid of that we got this nice little safe chemical copper sulfate and we'll spray that on there that will uh, kill the oxygen only out of the algae and then we'll put this uh, little dye blue dye here on this evening put the blue dye once we clear everything out we'll put the blue dye this way since during the evening the wind pushes this way during the morning time the wind comes this way that blue dye will help block some of the sunlight that produces the algae and everything and protects the uv rays from hitting the bottom causing the algae and the vegetation to grow the mrs naked gardener is over here cutting the remainder of the grass we've been having almost like two weeks straight of rain so it's been very hard to get us to cut this grass which is another reasons why we want to kind of uh, clear this pond out as much as possible uh, this pond cleaning see it's when you let it get out of hand it, it gets crazy I'm gonna show you the areas where we were normally cut and then when I was just weed eating, uh, how much over we should have been cutting more. But now that we have a, a, a rough idea, it's going to be good. I'm going to probably have Mrs. Nicky Garner come back over here and cut a lot of this grass. I'll show you real quick. So I'm not sure how bad you can see it here, but right up to there, that's where the edge stops. And we were stopping about right here. So we have roughly about two feet we could have been cutting more over. Kind of skeptical about right there because it kind of tilts off right there. But all in all, it looks pretty good. We got to get all of that vegetation out of here. And then after we do that, we'll get that moss. Ready to try this? Yep. Let me go put on the belt. Now that we got this all uh, assembled, so what you want to do is toss it out, let it sink, and then when you pull it, you just do short jerky motions to uh, get make sure you get all that underbrush. So we're gonna try it out. Where's your gloves? You don't need it for this okay. part. All right. I'll put this on my foot. There. So then you just kind of go through. And those blades are supposed to be cutting through? Yep. Ooh. That's just from one motion. That would be great for compost, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, and that's a good thing about seaweed. Uh, even though it gets a bad rap for pond, you can actually use this as a fertilizer. You could do like a seaweed compost. Uh, well, not, it's not really seaweed. It's algae. Uh, so you can use this as a, a compost tea or just using it in your compost or some type of fertilizer. Mm. 
I mean, these are some thick branches. Ideally, this is the best way to do it, though. Or organically, yeah, to yeah. do it um, mechanically. Because a lot of other people are using Roundup for this kind of thing. And it's, since we don't want to use Roundup because we plan on putting fish in here, and my head's already big enough, I don't need to add another head onto this body here. I'm surprised you don't want to wear gloves doing that. Yeah, I might have to get some. I mean, right now, you could almost, just from two passes, I got a good, good little area. Yeah, it's a nice little clearing that's starting to happen. It'll be nice to see this cleared up. It's starting to look prettier. We had to take a break from that hot, hot sun. Probably going to be a slow progress to get that pond in order. What we're going to be doing now, we're going to apply this copper sulfate, and this is going to get rid of a lot of the algae. Now, you have to read the directions on here because you've got to figure out what type of algae that you have. I think there's like three different types. The type that I identified that we had was the platonic, I believe it is. I think we have some, what they call smudge, uh, the, basically that film at the bottom of the pond. But there's something I was trying to find at the tractor uh, supply company to uh, get that. They didn't have it at the time. So we'll have to be on the lookout for it right now. But right now we're gonna concentrate on using this. Um, you have to go by your uh, size of your, your pond, how deep it is, and things of that nature. So don't go by how much we're putting in. And then you want to do it in batches. You don't want to do more than one third size of your pond uh, because you don't want to automatically shock your pond and t you know suffocate all the oxygen out of your pond because as you see, we have some fish in our pond, so we're just gonna do one third of the pond. We're gonna do in the uh, algae with the part that we just finished clearing out. The next week we'll do the other third, and then the week after that we'll probably do the last third, and then later on we'll still do the dye. Now the dye, that would be very beneficial. We have to put that in there right now since we got all that vegetation gone from the pond. We don't want it to come back. And from here on out, we just want to do a pond management. So we'll probably do something like this. We'll try it out. We'll do a, a follow-up every so often just to see how it is. And then we'll probably do a pond management every three months on the pond. So let's go mix this up, spray the pond, and then add the blue dye. Fill this up about three quarters full. I'm surprised this isn't as adds a surfactant in here uh, so we'll see how that goes shake it up let's go put on some gloves since this is a chemical this stuff will stain you so be careful And we'll finish the rest up with water. We have a lot of algae right here. Now they want you to break it up mechanically first. So let's see if we can do a little something. Most of our algae is at the top. We got that one fibrous one, but most of it is the algae at the top and you can see the fish is a lot better now that all this is gone can't reach out there so i'll just spray Oop. we want it on the fan version 
to make sure we get good coverage. There we go. Uh, we'll do string because I could get all of that out over there. So we got some right out that way and some right up in here. Yep, I made it. Stream is a lot easier. I could get all of that. Since we have no boat to get over there, stream will be it. Now this is all safe. It will not harm any of the fishes. And this is one of the best organic way to treat in uh, fishery ponds and stuff. I'm not sure if it works on lily pads and these type of vegetation, but since we're gonna treat one third of the pond here, we're just gonna cover the stuff that we did today. And then next weekend, we'll finish that up. Over here is real, real bad, which I don't understand why, because as you can see, it's not that much light gets over here, but we're gonna heavily saturate this area to get a lot of this vegetation gone. All right, once again, you got to figure out your dosage, your acres of your uh, pond. On the back of the bottle, it has directions of how to figure that out. You basically take your length times your width times your depth of the uh, pond and do it that way. I would definitely suggest using gloves on this because this is highly concentrated and it will make your uh, hand or whatever it gets on move for a while so definitely want to be mindful of that now you can actually if you want just put it in here and just toss it in the direction of where the wind is going so that way it don't get on you but since we already have the sprayer out here Let's just continue using it. I believe this camera doesn't do any justice of where y'all can see the color at. Probably won't till I come from the opposite end from over that way. So let's go over there real quick. You can kind of see the little haze on that right there. There is no wind. So it just completely just drops the UV rays can't see the bottom of it we're back it's been about a week now and the pond looks actually pretty good I'm gonna show you how it looks and then we're gonna try to finish up today all right so we're gonna start in this area it's a little bit of shade and I'm gonna work my way around here uh, that way I'll be making sure I'll be in the cool shade like I said it's gonna be 92 degrees here got my glove we're definitely gonna start with using my gloves because when I first did my first quarter of the acres or a quarter of the pond, my, I felt the rope, pulling on the rope, it was kind of eating up. And then later on that day, I found some, I had some calluses, my hands was very sore. I got my gallon of water and I got a sweat rag to help stay cool. I'm gonna start taking some breaks. Hopefully I should be done. Right now it's about 10.30. Hopefully we should be done around noon. Uh, so let's see how long it's gonna take. We're gonna allow this to dry out in the sun. And we'll come back next week, mow it down. She got a crawfish. She's happy about it. Look at her. You go, girl. You don't talk to me like that. You still don't talk to me like that. You better not hurt myself. You better not tell me shut up.
pretty much done. I mean, there's nothing else we can really do. There's no algae, so I'm not gonna apply any more algae onto the, uh, the pond here, and the pond is still blue. So therefore, we're just gonna leave it as is, and like I said, once a month, we're gonna be uh, doing some maintenance on here. Tomorrow, we will be, this is gonna all dry out, and then tomorrow we'll get the lawnmower to uh, mulch all of this through. And then that way, whatever's left over, the ducks from the other pond there can gather up and eat all of that. But it looks pretty good. What do y'all think? Comment down below. Now, if you want to watch other homesteading videos that we have done, we'll put a playlist over to the side for you to follow along. Until the next video, let's grow together.